Hello and welcome into the KE Report. I'm your host, Shad Markwitz, and today we're getting an update from Abra Silver Resource Corp. Abra Silver is traded on the TSXV under the ticker ABRA and on the OTCQX under the ticker ABBRF. I'm joined today with John Miniotis, President and CEO, and Dave O'Connor, Chief Geologist for Abra Silver. John, Dave, great to have you on the show as always. And today we're going to be looking at a couple different press releases you put out here in late March and early April. The one from April 2nd is really what gets my attention, and that is all of these drill holes you put out, 11 holes at the Jack extension at your Diablos project in Argentina. Now you guys have peppered in a lot of holes on this one, and I'll attach a map down below this for people listening in so you get a sense of visually where these are at. But it just goes to show that the jack deposit area continues to grow. John, I guess let's kick it off with just the main takeaways you want investors to have from the press release on April 2nd. Sounds great. Thanks very much, Shad. Certainly, as you mentioned, lots of exciting uh, news flow here from us recently. So yeah, in terms of the latest press release that, that we just recently announced, that was you know yet another strong batch of drill results from Diablos really focused on step out drilling at the jack zone primarily and uh, we also had uh, one hole there from from the oculto northeast zone as well but in in this uh, press release you know we announced the 11 uh, drill holes uh, that, that we just recently received and notably all 11 of them returned strong grades near surface which i think just really speaks to the continuity and robustness of the the mineralized zones that we're seeing here and so when you look at that press release, the, the standout intercept hit 190 grams per ton of silver over 63 meters at Jack. And importantly, that started at just 80 meters downhole depth, which of course is very, very shallow. And so for added context there, our current cutoff grade is 45 grams per ton, which means anything above that grade is economic for us to process. And so when you're hitting 190 grams per ton, that's more than four times our current cutoff grade. So clearly those types of grades are very, very high margin, extremely economic for us. And importantly, those types of grades are, are obviously not isolated here. I think, you know, when, when you look at our press release, you see the consistency of the, the high grade hits just really reinforces the confidence we have here that clearly we're, we're going to continue to see uh, resource growth. And so I think that's kind of the, the big takeaway from my side. I mean, clearly these uh, results, once again, show that the, the mineralized footprint we have continues to grow. We expect to be adding very highly economic ounces to future mine plans. So yeah, I'd say just once again, really shaping up to be a, a exciting year for us here as we're going to continue to drill these extended zones and also focus on some of the other underexplored targets that we have all across our property. So lots and lots of uh, exciting exploration news still ahead for us, for sure. Yeah, John, a very nice summary there that the jack zone continues to expand, the footprint continues to expand, also near surface. Dave, I want to bring you into the discussion here, though, because the other thing I continually see on your press releases, and this one's no exception, is just how wide the intercepts are, too. I talk to a lot of silver companies. Obviously, some of them are operating in Mexico, but even some that are in the U.S. or even in Canada that have narrow intercepts. They get excited about one meter, <laughs> two meters, three meters. The difference here is that some of these intercepts have 40 meters, 50 meters, 60 meters, 70 meter intercepts. And so I think it's very interesting, not just that you know the grade hangs together, but over wide packages of mineralization. Maybe just speak to that aspect of the jack deposit. Yeah, well, in general, I mean, um, the occulto system, Jack Occulto, Diablijos, it's a high sulfidation system. It's a different kind of system. So you can expect broader intercepts. The others that you're talking about in Mexico and uh, Santa Cruz province in, in Argentina, those are the low sulfidation systems. You expect high grade but narrow intercepts. So it's a different beast. And this uh, deposit is fed by a porphyry underneath at depth. And so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of it's a very robust system. And as John mentioned, these shallow intercepts, particularly at Jack, which is uh, starts at around about uh, sixty to 80, 80 meters below the surface, and um, the um, the mineralization there is is covered with the 
uh, unconsolidated colluvium. So it, it's uh, very economic and easy to strip off. That's the, the, the general comment on, on the width of the intercepts that we're getting there. Well, and Dave, when you look at where a lot of these holes are on the map, you know, to the southwest of the main deposit area, are you seeing things trail off a little bit as far as where the mineralization is, or do you think you could keep pressing the envelope and even push Jack even further to the southwest? We know, you know, these things have got to have a, a limit to them somewhere. I mean, everybody has to have a margin somewhere. But yes, we're pushing it. We're pushing it south. The, the intercepts that uh, we announced in the, the, the previous announcement a couple of days ago shows the uh, silver intercepts beyond the pit margin. And uh, that's the phase four. That's basically the end of the phase four drilling. And the phase four drilling was designed to increase the resources to be included in the DFS at Jack, essentially. And um, now, we're, we're, now we're stepping out further, and uh, this phase five that we're, we're rolling straight into has a program at Jack, and we will be um, carrying on expanding the resource, but on a broader space. And in, in other words, uh, not uh, uh, detailed enough to um, include in the, uh, in the resource estimate. It's, it'll be too late for the resource estimate anyway, but we'll be defining the size of the system and then following up with, uh, with grid drilling later on. Well, let's dig into phase five a little bit more. You did put out a press release back on March 24th, in the March, outlining some of the key initiatives from the phase five drill program. And in addition to some of the infill drilling that will help jump categories and fill in some of the areas for the resource, you're also doing step out drilling. And this is a 20,000 meter program, but you're also going to be testing some of the targets that have some focus, but uh, you're going to put a little more color around some of the newer areas you've been focused on and just some of the areas that don't have the density of drilling. So give us a high-level overview of Phase 5. Yeah, we, the, the Phase 5 announcement, uh, you can see that there are, there are numerous targets that we're drilling, and we've started off, of course, at Jack because, uh, as we say, we're, we're expanding the, the boundary of the resource, and we're trying to find the boundary of the resource which is both to the south and to the west of the southwestern end of Jack. We'll be doing uh, broader space drilling there. But one of the other targets in the southern part of Apulto is called Sombra. And there, our drilling is starting to look quite encouraging. We made an announcement on that a little while earlier, too. And uh, we have now enough confidence in the, in the Sombra drilling to show that it's not just a one-off, not just restricted. We think that it's an east-northeast trending zone parallel to Oculto, and now we've, start, we've got the confidence to start drilling it. Now we're, we're spending money on it now. So that's uh, Jack and Sombra where we have confidence, but also the expansion of the resource towards the east. In other words, one of the holes that we announced in the, in the last press release was uh, Oculto Northeast. There we're drilling holes uh, to try and determine the extent of a gold-rich zone, actually. It's a gold-dominant zone. It's gold and silver, but gold-dominant. And so both to the northeast, uh, Oculto Northeast and Oculto East, uh, we have um, pretty interesting targets to drill. We've done some detailed geological mapping, and now we're following up the structures that we mapped on the surface. Those areas are going to be drilled uh, in a reconnaissance basis to begin with, and then when we got more confidence, we'll be doing uh, uh, more grid drilling to get the resources. But um, I think what is, what is more exciting for the geologists anyway is that um, the area to the northeast – the porphyry complex. It's a porphyry complex. It's outcropping porphyry mineralization, outcropping porphyry intrusions uh, with associated um, porphyry-style alteration with them. And our recent drilling there got one hole, number 56, number 24056, which got uh, 36 meters of uh, 1.91 grams per ton gold, um, starting at around about 80 meters below the surface. And that's an epithermal overprint of the porphyry system. So we've got the porphyry target that remains there, which we were going to start systematically drilling or, or carrying on our, uh, our exploration drilling. But now we've been uh, short-circuited by this uh, epithermal system, which looks very promising. And the surface sampling shows that it extends for at least a kilometer east-west along strikes. So we now have a more systematic program of drilling starting there. It should start any day now with a, with a third rig coming in. So we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be drilling that um, epithermal system, which is called Cerro Viejo. 
Yeah, Dave, there's really just a lot going on as far as these different targets because that parallel trend from Sombra is pretty exciting too. But yeah, the uh, Colto northeast and east and all of that action is exciting. But then going further northeast to that porphyry target where you hit the near surface gold also raises a few eyebrows. So there's just a lot going on. And not to take away from the extension of Jack to the southeast, but there's several different areas of growth here. And then some of the old targets that you're going to go back and revisit as well. I guess, John, when you think about the key catalyst coming up for the company, what is the cutoff as far as the uh, resource? When do you think the resource will be out? And then I know you're working towards the definitive feasibility study as another key milestone. Maybe put some color on some of the key timelines that the company's working on. Yeah, so so as you mentioned, I mean, very, very busy year for us here. Uh, lots, lots going on at the same time, uh, which is excellent. I mean, that's how you add shareholder value here on multiple different fronts. And so, yeah, as Dave mentioned, I mean, the phase five programs off and running there. So an additional 20,000 meters of drilling. So as a result, we're going to have consistent news flow for the next 12 months, continuing from the, the drill campaign. In the meantime, the updated mineral resource estimate uh, should be out uh, sort of by middle of this year. So in a couple months time, end of June or, or sometime in July, I would expect that we'll have the, the next updated resource estimate there. And then some of the, the other key major catalysts for us over the, the coming 12 months, uh, certainly on the permitting side, looking to, to get our EIA permits approved before the end of this year. Uh, so that'll be a major catalyst that sets us up for construction next year. And then the feasibility study, of course, we're very, very busy working on that. We expect completion of that in just under 12 months time as well. And then finally, RIGI approval, which, uh, you know, grandfathers us in for a 30 year tax stability agreement, et cetera, uh, and major, major benefits there, you know, once we have the RIGI approval in hand. And so certainly lots of opportunities here. Uh, I think as we execute on all these deliverables, Clearly, an opportunity for us to, to add tremendous value here. But I'd say, you know, major, major advantage for us right now in these very volatile markets is that we're, you know, more than fully funded to get to a construction decision stage by, you know, a second half of next year. And so, you know, in these volatile times, even if you have catalysts ahead, but you run out of funding, uh, it could be extremely difficult for, for any junior to continue to make progress. With the financing that we just completed a couple months ago, we still have about $65 million Canadian in the bank. So a very, very strong balance sheet, obviously important. And we could just focus on, on executing uh, and not having to worry about the day-to-day -day sort of uh, valuation volatility that we're seeing out there. And so we're, we're in an extremely strong position uh, to just keep driving forward here. And we have an outstanding project, clearly. And I think as, as we deliver on all these milestones in 12 months time, we're going to be in a much, much different situation here with an extremely compelling project ready for a construction decision. Well, and John, just maybe one final follow up on what you just covered there for people. It really is a unique position that Abrasilver is in. Most companies don't have over $60 million in the kitty ready to go, and, and they're not just in execution mode. They've got their hat out and they're trying to raise money. But I think this next year, year and a half is so crucial for the company because, yes, you're going to be updating the resource. Yes, you got a lot of drilling going on. The permitting process starting is important. But really, in 2026 next year, all these things are going to be coalescing into, you know, tapping into that riggy, taking advantage of the not just the tax advantages, but also it just shaves a huge amount off the economics. And I think it has to be started in 2026, if I remember correctly. So talk to us about where you think Abra Silver is in the universe of silver and gold stocks as far as, you know, the catalyst that you have coming up is really where the rubber meets the road for the company. Yeah. And when you look at the landscape of primary silver projects out there, there's clearly, a, you know, a high scarcity, I'd say, having a high quality primary silver project ready for construction by sort of uh, next year really, really stands out. I think, you know, there's a small handful, not even a handful of primary silver projects out there at this advanced stage. And so we're, we're really see ourselves in a very unique position. Again, I think having, having the strong balance sheet in these turbulent times is, is a massive, massive advantage for us. Having also some of the, the top strategic shareholders, so with the support from Central Puerto, Eric Sprott, Kinross, and some of the other institutions that, that invested in us just recently, you know, I think we have very, very strong backing as well. 
And so, yeah, no, I think a very unique opportunity for ourselves. We, we clearly recognize, you know, the importance of achieving all these catalysts uh, that we're working on now over the next 12 months. And then it's going to be, without question, a standout project uh, with incredible economics at any conceivable silver price looking forward. I mean, our PFS update that we announced was only based on $25.50 silver and just north of $2,000 gold. And so silver recently has been, you know, approaching $35. Gold, of course, continues to be above $3,000. And so even if there's a pullback and silver goes back to $25, which, of course, we're not expecting, but even at those levels, this project's generating free cash flow of over $200 million U.S. per year at $25.50 silver price. So massive, massive free cash flow potential, even at much lower commodity prices. And so I think under any foreseeable situation going forward, we, we see this as a project that's going to get built, going to be in construction. And, you know, that's approaching very quickly here. Yeah, great and summary and a great point. It's a project that makes sense at much lower prices. If you have the higher prices, that's just gravy on the top. But I think we'll wrap it up there for today. A lot of news flow on tap for Abra Silver. And so for those listening into this call, definitely click on the link below in the show notes. It takes you over to the Abra Silver website, straight to their news section, where you can follow along with all the drill news that's going to come out, the permitting news, and all of the development news, and then watching out for that resource here in a couple of months. John, Dave, great to have you on the show as always, and looking forward to our next conversation. That's Thanks great. So much, Thanks very much.